Growing concerns about the current Senate health care bill with cuts to Medicaid that could impact possibly the opioid crisis, with some Democrats saying that it would make the epidemic even worse. And joining us now is Joe Schrank. He's an addiction expert who runs the recovery program called Rebound Brooklyn. And Dr. Joe Halliner, or Halliner, he's a psychiatrist and executive medical director of HCA Healthcare's Medical uh, City Green Oaks Hospital in Texas. Thank you both for joining us at this very important topic. Uh, we just heard from Senator Manchin there. His state hit hard by the opioid crisis. 36 out of every 100,000 people died from overdoses in uh, 2015. There in his state, 91 Americans die every day from an overdose, an opioid overdose. What do we need to do to stop this crisis, Joe? Well, we need to be realistic that it's first and foremost a health crisis. It's not anything that the judicial system or incarceration or law enforcement is going to solve. You know, addiction is a mental health issue. Uh, there's certainly an element of behavior. There's an element of behavior with lots of different health issues, whether it's obesity, hypertension, or type 2 diabetes. So to just posture morality that it's a matter of willpower or a matter of moral failing is wrong. So when we start implementing the values and the knowledge of, of uh, public health will have a much, much better result. You know, uh, Dr. Holliner, currently the bill, it has put aside, what, $2 billion to the states uh, to deal with the opioid crisis. Uh, Senator Bob Portman of Ohio, another state hit hard. He says that they need up to $45 billion over the next decade to deal with it. Uh, is it a case of drugs being over-prescribed as well? well it really is. A yeah, it really is a case of drugs being overprescribed. Obviously, the patients that get the drugs can overtake them and they have to have some responsibility, but the physicians have been prescribing it. There are 100 million Americans that have chronic pain, and we physicians want to help them. So we prescribe these medications, but we're doing it in too large quantities, not working to get patients off, tapering them off of these medications. And I think physicians need to change our practice patterns to turn this around. Yeah, Joe, it was amazing to me. I was reading that uh, at least three major cities, it's Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco, they're training library employees in how to deal with the drug that will reverse the overdoses. That's how bad it has gotten. Right. Right, it's prevalent in all kinds of systems. Librarians that really shouldn't be in their job description to revive somebody who's overdosed. You know, one of the things that's being overlooked and overprescribing is is part of the problem. We all share responsibility in this problem. But 25% fewer overdose deaths in states with safe and accessible medicinal cannabis is something that cannot be overlooked. One of the ways that people can manage pain, and there was a great study that came out from Dr. Amanda Ryman uh, about people who are able to circumvent. Uh, opiate use or avoid it um, or replace their opiate use for pain management with medicinal cannabis. It's mm -hmm. an option that must be looked at. I'm currently running a program in Los Angeles called High Sobriety and we use medicinal cannabis for this purpose to help people not only uh, get off of opiates but to stay off of opiates. Yeah, Doctor, if there's fewer pills there's fewer overdoses. You know, that's true. Dr. Holliner, I definitely want to get your take on that. I mean in the meantime maybe those are being helped but the overdoses have more than tripled nationwide between 1999 up until 2015. Yeah, it's, it's so out of control that there are more deaths from overdoses in America there are from car crashes, from gun fatalities. So it is a real crisis. Uh, we're saying there's 91 deaths a day on average, 33,000 a year, and it's anticipated that if we don't make drastic changes, it's going to go up to as high as 250 deaths a day. In the next decade, it's not unreasonable to think that there could be 500,000 deaths from opiates and from overdoses. So we've really got to get this turned around. By but the is more money the answer? Is more money, I mean, because that's what we're dealing with right now with the health care bill. Is more money the answer? Um, will cuts to Medicaid mean more people die as a result of these overdoses? Cuts, cuts to Medicaid will absolutely mean more people die. It's cheaper, it's more cost effective to treat somebody than to incarcerate somebody. And until our mindset shifts, you know, to the point where this is a public health and mental health issue and not something that can be um, incarcerated, that's really the issue here. And the issue is also the taxation of alcohol. It's low taxed, it never pays the piper, the damage it causes is massive, and so we can fund treatment. We can do this if we had the political resolve to do so. Dr. Holliner, you get the last word here. Well, thank you. <laughs> Opiates lead to $80 billion of cost. 
in lack of work performance, destruction in lives, me careers, medical treatment. So definitely anything we can do to try to reverse this trend is going to be extremely important and money is part of the answer. All right. Thank you both for joining us. A very important topic. I appreciate your insight. Thank you. Thank you for having us.